If I know your mom, and I'm pretty sure I do, she's always peppering you with little nuggets of wisdom. Never play ball in the street. Make sure you're eating enough greens. Don't stare directly at the exposed flame from that welding torch. As it turns out, that last one is not terrible advice. And we will find out why on this week's retina melting episode of Random Knowledge. I'm Geeks You Drink, Chief Editor Christopher Short. Every year we write 22,000 quiz questions, 20 words each. Some of those stories deserve more time, so we made a video series. We're geeks who drink and we read stuff all the time. This is Random Knowledge. So, it is a big old duh that welding got big in the iron and bronze ages. The earliest form was called forge welding. Two metal pieces heated at both ends, then pounded together with a hammer until they bonded. To this day, it is not a pediatrician recommended method of forcing siblings to get along. Blacksmiths learned early on that heavy aprons could keep them from bodily bursting into flames, but normally there was no eye protection involved, which means that's right, steampunk dwarves have been straight up lying to you. Like everything else, welding advanced by leaps and bounds starting around the turn of the 19th century. You had resistance welding, spot welding, oxyfuel, Jimmy Smith's, gas tungsten, coconut shrimp, creme brulee, bugbears, and finally arc welding. Those technologies, at least the ones I didn't just make up, they're efficient, but they introduce a few new dangers. Number one, uh, you can get flash burns from the sparks. And number two, an electric arc flame can hurt your eyes, even if you watch from across the room while you make somebody else do it. See, that flame can shoot nasty UV rays right into your eyes, inflaming your corneas. That condition is called photokeratitis, or if we're saving syllables, arc eye. Ah! Basically, it's a sunburn right on your eyeballs, one that you should definitely not apply lotion to. Ah! The official word is that a guy named James Asco started experimenting with tinted sun lenses in the 1750s in England, of all places, and various goggles and masks coalesced into a one-piece welding helmet right before World War II which has advanced incrementally since then. The problem is that, surprise, some non-European people came up with a great solution like 2,000 years ago. So it's not quite arc welding, but fresh snow can bounce UV rays about five times harder than a sandy beach, which can cause photokeratitis in the form that we call snow blindness. The effect <laughs> gets worse with elevation. So the top of the world presents a triple threat. You have higher high points, you have plenty of reflective snow, and you have a sun that famously stays up for weeks at a time. So to combat eyeball sunburns, the ancestors of the modern Inuit made goggles from caribou antlers or from driftwood with little slits to see out of and stringy sinews to wrap them around their heads, which all told, you have to admit, is a way cooler look than steampunk. Well, that is about it for now, and now you have a answer you can use at our quiz on this date. Until next time, do the like and subscribe thing on this channel. Go to geekswhodrink.com to find out where we're doing live quizzes in a bar near you. And remember, always wear a helmet when you're welding and never look at a pooping dog or you'll get a sty in your eye, which is an actual real old wives tale. Goodbye.